happy days. So now, in the basic form of it, if I was like, oh, hey, uh, obviously you need to have these all switched on. If you're like, um, you know what, I want to use um, the hydraulic pipe bender. That's what I want to use. So I'm going to have the tool one open. All you got to do is just go along and open up all of these. Now everything should work its way around. There we go. Now we've got our iron and copper in there. So that is basically, if you just wanted to set this up without any logic, that's how you can do it. And now, hello Vikings. Welcome back to Station Ears. Um, now how can we start this off? Let's just put it this way. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry for the inconsistency of the uploads this week. Um, the internet's been down. <clears throat> and um, it's back on now, but it just means I've been having to use the 4G off my phone to try and get videos up. So that's the reason why there was only Breath Edge and Kerbal Space Program up as I speak now. Um, but things should be back to normal after going into Thursday, which is when I'm hoping to get this episode up by. And <coughs> I did shoot an episode um, for this. And when I played the recording back, it was just a lot of me rambling, if I'm honest with you. Um, and it wasn't that much exciting going on. Basically, I've decided to build another room, as I think I previously mentioned, for setting up the automation of the printers. And yeah, so it was just basically me digging out that space and building the room, running back and forth, collecting my materials, and just me rambling. Um, but because I was hyped after <coughs> getting some uh, the power room finished and having a really, really good stream with you guys on the weekend just gone. Um, yeah, my head was all over the place with ideas and things to do. So, yeah, the way it bro sort of broke out and the way I felt it came across was it was very all over the place. Um, very skittish, um, the way I was talking. So instead of boring you with that, what I'm planning on doing, if you want, is I'm going to try and salvage some clips and maybe do some time lapse in of how the printer room was made. Um, but it probably won't be like a full proper episode. I don't really want to bore you guys with that. Um, but without further ado, we are going to move on to automating these. Um, so let's go across and I'll show you the room that I created. So I put a little um, balcony, not balcony, corridor here. So the entrance now looks like this. This is our entrance. Down to the solar panels, which are off that way. You can't see at the moment because the sun's just coming up. And yeah. So I moved the stairs over a little bit and then create this space here. So this is going to be our printer room. Uh, I tried doing something different with the roofing. Um, hopefully it looks all right, but it's got a little bit of a panoramic view over the area. Which is quite nice, catches the sun quite nicely coming in. And when I was actually digging it out, I didn't pay much attention. Like I said, I was rambling quite a bit um, and was too excited about the possibilities of programming and everything. So I dug it. this layer, which is perfect for what we need, and then I went down an extra layer. And I've been thinking about it, and this layer down here <coughs> will probably end up being. Um, a recycling hub so I might have the centrifuge down here and the recycler um, and again using some sort of conveyance system mainly shoots probably to get stuff up and down to there considering it's going to be a production room that would make some sense I'm moving over to heavy transformers well not heavy, not the large ones medium transformers now um, with heavy cables, uh, just from experience of the live stream, we're having shortages of power now up at the filtration room. So that's no good. So we're going to go to heavy cables now with new rooms that we're building, and we might go. We need to go back and look at the filtration room, and either split it off on two transformers and put some heavy cable in there. I think. Now I have been. I don't know if any of you guys follow me on Instagram or Facebook. I did put a picture up the other day of me having some notepads open and I was doing a bit of coding trying to figure out how I was going to program this um, to get it all working properly. So you would have had a sneak peek already at the code that we're going to be using. 
But first things first, let's put the simple form of this room together. Uh, so start placing some stuff down, I guess. We've got sorters, which they're going to go downstairs. So we can just get them down there. There. Right down there. Okay, let's go with... I did mark roughly where I was going to start putting stuff, and then I thought, eh, well, that's going to change on the fly. So, and I've decided now that I want like lockers at the back that are going to store all the bits and bobs that we print. So, for this to work, placement requires support. Can we not build on this? Oh no, we won't. Um, That's going to be interesting. What we're going to have to do is put frames down, I believe, to get this in. And yeah, I think we're going to have to put frames in, actually. Hmm. I didn't think about that. Or I tell you what, we can actually do. There's a probably actually a little bit of a sneaky way of getting around this. I would have thought. Let's go see. Let's go see quickly. Uh, flat wall. So I hope you've all been keeping well in my absence. Um, that's it. Lay down there. So I put these down. Will you now let me? Where did I throw that wall leaf? You should let me... No, you're not going to. I can put it there though. I don't want to put it there because I want to have... Well, that's annoying. We are going to have to put frames down. Okay. Bear with me here. And I think the other thing I've explained in this episode actually, um, we're going, this is probably going to be definitely a multi-part, a bit like the power room. Um, we're going to get something set up and then we're going to have to get um, one sec, I'm starting here. I'm losing trade for. Um, yeah, we're going to have to get some things set up today and then probably finish off the coding afterwards. Not all the coding, just some of it. Um, because it's going to be done over three ICs, um, just purely because the amount of printers we got and the fact that I'm going to have a system so we can get some of the ingots back out on request as and when we need to. Um, for instance, when we are when we want to go smelt something. So now, let's place these. I don't think you're going to allow me to put... Oh, you are now going to let me place that on there. Happy days! Right. So, we're going to look to have it say... Um, I mean, we're going to have four, maybe just like so, wrench to take apart, I want one more forward actually. Maybe there. And then we have the electronics. See there. Pipe bender. See. There. Actually, no. No, no, no. You're going to have to go as far over as... Oh, mind you, you can go center. And then we could have a little walkway in the middle, I suppose. Or well, we're going to actually have to... 
Yeah, because one sec shoot's gonna have to come in and up. That's gonna be like one shoot, two shoot. Okay. So we'll do this again. One shoot, two shoot. That should work out now. And tool manufacturing. One, two. So what we're actually gonna look at is I need iron sheets. I don't think I've got any iron sheets up here. May I make some quickly. We are going to be looking at um, just the four printers um, to start with, and we will <coughs> look at doing the security printer because the security printer we're not actually going to be using a whole lot. So that's again where the ingot requesting um, that we can do in the system. will come into effect so we can basically say hey we need some steel right now um, pull the steel out of the system for us which will be a bonus why did I forget you might be thinking why am I not just dismantling these ones I'm keeping them ones up for the moment because of stuff like this I don't know what I'm going to need to make because um, you know typical me I prep as much as I can in the background as you can see there's loads of stuff laying around the room um, but then I always forget to build something and if I've got these halfway through being set up and not fully functional isn't gonna work and that should be enough to get that job done I had cable on me anyway I just realized that now I just looked I thought I was carrying a load of heavy cable don't mind me I'm a bit silly like I said, my mind at the moment is like full of different ideas of what can we build, how can we build it, there's so much to do, like I've got to build the bat cave for Shag 1 to park in, which is our rover, those of you that don't know. Um, Right, so let's first thing first, let's run power down to these placement blocks. Why is placement blocked? Okay, where's that wire going? Like I said, everything's going to be on heavy cable. I'm probably going to need a lot more. Whoops. Heavy cable, actually. I want to get at least the first bit of coding done in this episode today. So hopefully you don't mind it being <coughs> excuse me, a bit of a long one. Because I would actually like to get something achieved this episode. As a why as opposed to just setting stuff up. Um right. Will you now power on? Excellent. So we've got power to the room. Lovely. Okay, let's go tell this in here to print off some more heavy cable for us. And we can always come back and grab that in a sec. 
I'll tell you what, you could print as much up to the gold we've got. That would be lovely. What's next? What's next? Well, first things first, we need to send down... Shoots. Oh, well, that's handy. We could have actually had them closer together. Okay, we would have got away. I didn't realise they were offset, to be fair. Now, hopefully I've got enough shoots as well. I probably haven't, know me. Hopefully now we can tear these up. I think detrimental is going to happen. Of course, no battery power. I think I've got a spare small one around here. Nice stack of heavy cables. are going to do now is head downstairs and put the sorters in and we need to figure out a way actually of how this is actually going to get realizing maybe I mean I want to be able to walk around I want to have a shoot somewhere an input and an output shoot just thinking 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 have it come over the top so that would look something like nope nope actually nope Can I have it come from the bottom, come from the top and go into the side? Doesn't look like it. I can have it go that way. Which is what we want. I suppose I could have it... Because what we want is a shoot bin. See? We need one of those. But I don't want it. I want it over here, really. Let's 
let's just get this stuff out of the way. Crowbar. We have it, for instance, here. But we want it facing up, per se. Like this. And we could have it here. And then we'd have it. Let's go up. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more shoots, I think. such an eyesore though. That is just a bit of an eyesore. All because I want Hmm. I mean because really it's not gonna You know what? Bear with me guys. I'm just gonna um Push this all back and see a uh, difference it makes. Just give me... Well, it'll be a blink of an eye for you. Um, but I'm just going to literally tear that up after I've had this. And move it all back. Okay guys, we're back. After a little bit of fiddling around, we've got them situated where we want them now. So, we have got an input here. Um, we are actually going to run a input over straight from the arc um, furnaces eventually um, but for interim this is how we're going to put the ingots into the system just need to get that wired up and just a stop gap measure it also means that if we do take any um, well for instance steel is not going to come um, from the arc furnaces so steel will probably bring down here manually um, yeah, it just gives us gives us a way of putting into the system. And like I said, we are gonna come up um we have got plans on how to bring um the ingots back out of the system. So I've set the sorters up downstairs as well and just made sure they power on. And what's basically gonna happen here is this sort is gonna come out let's just hook it up and you'll see. <coughs> so this one's gonna come Straight down, like, not like that. Okay. That's uh, not placed very well. So we'll just make this up as we are. Eh, eh. Typical. Um, yeah, so. We're going to have this like this. So, it's a bit fiddly. Uh, it's not the cleanest of looking. But basically, that's going to come out of there. Um, this one is then... You need sorters here, basically, because the ingots are going to travel between the systems. But then, obviously, if you're manufacturing something, you're going to want to get those goods out. And this is where this comes in. I actually want to... end that this way. Yeah. That way, actually. And I want to put junctions in here, actually. It makes sense. I think. Um, yeah, and then out, so out, out of the left side, how can I put it? So the closest side to the switch is usually the stuff that's not whitelisted, the stuff that you're not sorting. And then everything that you're sorting comes out on this side here. So, actually we can't go that way either. Because, 
I know which way we can go. We have to go sort of down and round. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit fiddly. But if we go down and round like this. Right, let's quickly get this the escape. So everything that gets manufactured is going to come down this route here. So we need now. Is it going to let me do this the way I want to do it? Probably not. <laughs> So that is that junction coming that way. That's that junction coming that way. Yeah. Because we can't have you can't have Pre, basically, the ingots could pass through the system, that's fine, but anything you manufacture ain't going to go back through a system, so you need to have a way of collecting it out and running it somewhere that you're going to want to pick it up from. And what we can do, can be a bit cheeky and have it come up into here. Um, I suppose we could, if it would let us. This is the last one in the system. So that can sit like that. That's why this one's facing the opposite way. And then hopefully it will allow us to put a junction here. No more shoots. No, I want to send it in. Why are you not letting me do it? get it done actually no it's not gonna work so that's not a problem we will just hook it up another way So I did say everything coming out left is Yeah. This is where it just gets a little bit fiddly setting this up. Uh, but once it's set up it's it's done. And then You can run around here, and what we're actually going to do is probably have our outlet up here somewhere. So you actually need to come around like so. Let's see what junction we can get on here. That will work. That will work. All right, have I got any more shoots? Got a few more, but I'm gonna let's go tell <coughs> the 
the pipe burner to just knock up some more for us. I've got loads and loads of ore on the go at the moment. I'm still lacking gold, so it was one of the reasons why I built the rover, so I can go out and get a load of gold at some point. There's no gold around my base at all. Quite disappointing. Right. And another thing we're going to be looking at setting up long term on this system is. Uh, what was I going to say? Is the stacking system that we tried before. So, where it read these will read communicate with the stacker. So say you want 60 pipes made, even though they only stack in a 20, they will eventually turn off. You can walk away and leave your. Um, Leave your machines to do the work. So let's have you come up here. And let's say we're going to have the outlet. First, we could have. Where was it? Out, it could work like that. That will work. Okay, so that's where our goods are going to come out of. And then basically the ingots will still come out of here and they're just going to cycle down to here. So we shouldn't actually need that many more shoots. Um, oh no, we still need to hook all of these up yet. Whoops. So, what we're looking at here, so that's the output, that's the output. This one's all done, because that's just an output, and then ingots are going to go back around this way. So this just needs to get hooked up to this. Yeah, because that's the input for that. Okay. I'm keeping track of this. Hopefully you guys are keeping track of this. Um, oh, shoots are just so damn fiddly. Yeah, because then that's going to come down and in. So let's do this one. Happy days. Let's go get some more shoots. Shoot, shoot, shoots. And then I think we can finally get on to... Oh, we got flying shoots. I know it's terrible. I'm just dumping tools on the floor at this point. Um, <coughs> I kind of like this red and black. I might use that actually as an outer perimeter so I know when I'm dismantling stuff I'm like oh that's where the wall ends I hope I've got these uh, swords the right way around because um, that would be funny if I haven't Hydration critical. oh really go fix that quickly should really carry a water bottle on me um, I've only got the one built the one made um, I will look at. I'm gonna have a water filling station at some point in every room, which will help with that. But I really probably cut these doors before we get a storm come. Cause chaos. Uh, where'd I put those? Look, shoot somewhere. Where did I, did I leave them down here? I did. Going insane, guys. Um, right. That's done, that's done, that's done. So now it's just the inputs. The outputs, should I say. I really wish the junctions were... Oh. They made the junctions like everything else. Like when using cable and pipes. Which they just allowed you to have the 
wrench in your hand and you can just make stuff up. That'd be so much easier. Again, we're not going for um, glamorous here, we're going for effective. Effective. Actually, just in case we ever need to get into this, I'm going to run this across the floor a little bit. Because why not? A little bit of uh, prior maintenance that was coming back. They was having to try and jump over it. Well, it would be one off, wouldn't I? Of course. So, with this one, everything that is. <coughs> that's. Um, yes, yeah, this one that needs to go up to there, really. So, let's run this one for now. It's going to run over here. And it can just sit. Yeah, not going to be in use. Not until a later stage. Hopefully I've got enough to get over there. Probably not going to have. Uh, okay, that's annoying. But, predictable. How comes pipes can go through wires, but you can't have... Right, as I keep saying, it's not pretty, but it'll work. So, on that note, let's... Um, we need to put trigger plates in. Right, we'll store the extra ones of these over here. So much to do, so much to do. We're going to need trigger plates. I bet I'm going to need frames for these. <sighs> Pain in the butt. Oh, oh I thought I was going to kill myself then. Just put these. Well, to be fair, that can actually stay there. They, we might be actually out, be able to get away with this. Why can we not? We could put them on them, but we can't put it there. I think... Hmm. Are we going to need to put another one here? That's your problem? Yep. Okay. We'll quickly put these in. Get it wired up. And these are basically going to tell... The system, what machine we're at. And we dumped the wire there. Okay, so I'm hoping now that if we decide to uh, battery, battery. 
battery batteries. Really start putting the large batteries in these. Okay, hopefully we don't need the frames anymore. Let's go put some walls in. Where'd I put the rest of these flat walls? Did I not bring them with? Cool. Just so we can stand on everything. I think that we're not going to need... This should work. It's a bitch. Like, I wish you didn't have to build frames and take the frames away and do things like this, but as long as there's still a workaround, still sheets. I'm picking up plastic and it's still sheets we need. Where's my still sheets? Oh, yes. Still got a gap there. That should be alright for now. That's the output. Right. Okay. So, in theory, all we need to do now is Just to show you it's working. I actually need to set the <coughs> the whitelist up. So this is the basic way you could do it. Um, let's turn you on. Let's turn you on. That's going to go into there, which is what we expect to happen. Now, if we take our... Where's our computer gone? Um, let's strap uh, this computer in here. Just needs to go down somewhere. Doesn't matter, because we can move it. Keep building new computers when really I could just tear up the old ones. Move them about. You only really need one computer, I think. Unless you are constantly accessing something. Right, what we're going to need to do is whitelist all the other sorters. I don't think if I mentioned that I named them, but I've basically named them according to the machine they're at. But yeah, as you can see, we've got the electronic sorter. Uh, so what we're going to whitelist here is ingots. Should be at the top if it's in. There we go, ingots. So all the ingots are going to go off to one side. So we'll do the autolave as well. And then the ship pass them to the next machine as opposed to bringing them to the exit. Uh, we don't need the ingot request. The ingot, this request sorter is the last one that we put in here and that's going to be used at a later date. All we need to do is just set this up and the tool sorter. Let's see everyone. Happy days. So now, in the basic form of it, if I was like, oh, hey, uh, obviously you need to have these all switched on. 
pure like um you know what i want to use um the hydraulic pipe bender that's what i want to use so i'm going to have tool one open all you got to do is just go along and open up all of these now everything should work its way around there we go now we've got our iron and copper in there so that is basically if you just wanted to set this up without any logic that's how you can do it and now because I haven't whitelisted anything else, what I could do is say from here, I just wanted to print, mm, let's print another wall bottle while we're here. I don't have silicon. Let me go grab some silicon just to prove I'm not going insane. Let's turn all this off now. Um, we can actually turn this off as well. Um, so eventually, yeah, like I said, this won't come out here. This will run right down there. Um, eventually. Now we come in here. Just dump this in. It should go through all the machines. It's going to go through them in order. It has to. Um, and then it's going to end up in here. Because it's an ingot. And then we're just going to go, hey, build me uh, that water well. Of course, we still got manually tell it to switch off. It should there you go one water bowl comes out there how perfect is that now we're going to get onto the fun of how do you automate that because i mean you could just come in here and just go i want to use this um and just pull all the things up but that's not much fun is it hello vikings hey. hello Sorry to interrupt your episode. Is it really? We got little Viking Damien here with us. Um, I had to pause. Yeah, I've paused the episode here because from shooting this, I kind of went straight into the coding. Yeah, and um, it's made it very, very long. I mean, the recording was about two hours. Um, I've already edited down to about an hour and a half. So what I'm aiming to do is it really? Um, mommy, getting food ready. Um, so we're cutting the episode in half. If my little man will let me talk. Um, and we're basically, so for this, you've got the, the build and the basic setup of it. And then on the following episode, we're going to dive straight into the automation and the coding of it. So hopefully, um, you've enjoyed this episode. Um, I'm just sort of adding this outro on so you know what's going on so the episode just doesn't cut and you're wondering oh where's everything gone um so yeah if you've enjoyed it um and seen something new leave a like leave a comment subscribe if you haven't already done so the viking compels you the little viking man compels you hey damien tell him to subscribe distracted by dante now the other little viking yes so as always guys i'll see you on the next one Take care.